Hey guys, uh, Urban Architect here, and uh, today I'll be running you guys through just how to use lane math in your cities and just how to use it to improve how traffic flows on your highways and in your city grids. And so just first of all to give you a basic understanding of what lane math is and how lane math works, I'll be using this vanilla cloverleaf intersection, which at surface level does look like a fairly solid highway interchange. But once you do look at these nodes right here, for example this node, you'll notice that traffic on this ramp merges into the same lane as through traffic on this lane. And since the angle is so tight, since there's no light, since there's no yield sign, this traffic is going to come in very fast and these cars right here are going to have to break. And in city skylines, especially on your highways, the main cause of traffic is cars braking. So what I'd recommend to do this, and also right here you can also see that cars turning out onto this exit ramp, cars turning out onto this exit ramp use the same lane as through traffic on this ramp, and cars turning in city skylines, cars turn very very slowly. Which means these cars will also have to brake, and that's how you get those big traffic jams lined up miles behind your intersections. So in order to solve this we do something called lane math and the basic concept behind lane math is the same number of lanes you have coming in to your intersection is the same number of lanes you have exiting interse your intersection. For example here we have three lanes coming out and then we have three plus one exiting which means we have a shortage of one lane. So instead what we do right here is we turn this segment into a two-lane highway and then we use traffic manager which is essential for this and we make it so that the only cars in this lane right here are cars that are gonna take this exit ramp and that effectively means that cars can pre-sort themselves out miles in advance and there's no traffic caused because traffic flows smoothly through your intersection there's no stopping there's no braking there's nothing and right here, we've already technically done the lane math because now that we've downgraded this to two lanes, we have three lanes coming in and we have three lanes coming out. So then we just do traffic manager, All right? We go right there. We make sure that cars can flow through the intersection. That's this one in green. And there you go, there's lane math. Because now traffic will flow freely. And what would we do for the rest of this? Here we have three coming in and four exiting. So we downgrade this to two and then now we have three and three. And we just do that for all these segments right here. And that's basically what lane math would look like on a cloverleaf intersection. Alternatively, if you wanted to keep three lanes here, if you had more through traffic, you could do four and three and then four and then four and then four and then four and then four. Right, but you get the point. It doesn't matter how many lanes you have. There's no set equation. It's just they have to add up at the end. Right, this right here is just as effective an intersection. And this is useful not only for, you know, your standard things like clover leaves, your standard highway interchanges, but also your awkwardly sized exits where you start wondering, you know, how many lanes am I going to use for this, right? Well here, let's say we have these two, this highway, right, doing a curve and exiting onto a medium road, right? Well, first of all, we'll split our medium, we'd want to split our medium road just to prevent awkward crossing over into two, two ways. And there you go. You can start doing lane math through the course of your intersection. So things coming off of this right here would become that one and that one. And I'm gonna ignore elevation right here so things are gonna overlap, I'm sorry. And real quick, we just use move it for the nodes. Or you can also use node controller, which is much better for this. And then things coming right here. Great, that's a horrible angle, but it works. And then right here. Okay. Well, it's, it's awkward, but see right there, our lane math starts here so that 
when we do these intersections, you don't have a lane going this way, and then a lane going that way, and then a lane going this way. And so that it essentially sorts itself more smoothly, right? And that also means we have four lanes coming in, turning into a four lane road. Now right here, we'd want, since we still have a shortage of two lanes, we only have one coming in, the remaining connection of this intersection we'd make to be two lanes. Oh my God, why is it gone there? But you get the point. We end here. And essentially what you want to do is you want to make sure, right, that it always adds up, right? So there you have three, and there you have three. So then once you have your awkward interchange and you fix the elevation so that cars can actually drive through it, you'd note that here you have one and two and here you have one and two and here you have one and two and it all adds up. So when you're making awkwardly shaped intersections like this, a great rule to follow is lane math. And that lets you keep track of your lanes and know what should be thicker, what should be thinner. And really just, it allows you to more effectively know what goes where. So that's basically how you can use lane math to help you with your highways. And I do recommend it as it does help with smoothness. And while lane math in, while lane math in, well, on highways is to prevent braking because cars don't stop on highways unless it's traffic. In your city grid, there's more stop and start traffic. So what you're aiming to avoid when you do that, when you use lane math in your city grid proper, is avoiding something that would happen, say, if you just had this intersection right here, where cars that want to turn left onto this avenue from this avenue would have to yield because it's a standard intersection, right? Would have to yield to cars passing through the intersection from this way. And that has an unfortunate side effect that cars in this lane right here, the pink lane, that want to continue straight, unfortunately can't because they're stuck waiting behind these cars that are yielding, right? Since left turns generally mean that cars are going to have to stop so the solution to that is using your basic lane math, your lane math to create intersections where the lane math involves, we have two lanes exiting here. So let's have three lanes coming in from here so that we can afford to dedicate one lane to these left turning cars. And we do that through the entire intersection, right? And that lets us have one lane corresponding for each lane across the intersection. And right now you're probably wondering why I didn't also do a dedicated right turn lane. That's because unless there's a pedestrian, a right turn won't make a car stop. A right turn. Meanwhile, a left turn, the car has to yield to this oncoming traffic. So it's generally fine to have one of your lanes, generally the one closest to the right turn, to have one of your lanes correspond with one lane across the intersection and then your right turns. And doing this sort of thing for all of your intersect for all of your roads is very time consuming, right? And you generally even won't be able to do it for all of your roads because there are no, as far as I've been able to find, there are no big tram roads, for example, with right turns or left turns with more lanes on one side. But, I mean, I do this in all of my, every road, even the small roads using network extension small roads. These are really, really good. I, I, I can't recommend this mod enough. Using these roads, right, I'm able to do it. But even if you just do it on your big roads, you'll see a big increase in just how nicely and how smoothly traffic flows in your city simply because cars aren't getting stuck. And anyhow, uh, that about does wrap it up for my tutorial on lane math in city skylines mods I'd recommend. Traffic Manager President Edition. It's a classic. It's very good. You can use the lane connector or you can use the lane arrow manager, right? And it's essential because traffic AI probably won't figure this all out on its own. And as for the roads, I recommend network extensions for smaller roads like this. 
and these roads they're british they're really really solid they are by grazuno can't recommend them enough because the network extensions two plus three or two plus four here's the network extensions two plus three look at that parking it's terrible so i'd recommend these as well and then for the highways uh there's no particular asset i mean yeah there's no particular asset for this just use whatever highway you want and if you want to stretch these nodes a bit out you can use node controller anyhow thank you for watching have a great day